guys, do you notice anything on the on your screen? Do you see it? I'll give you a hint. It's in the bottom third of the video. Yep, right here. Good, you found it. Your wish came true. I did in fact plan and draw the final stretch of the Northeast High Speed Rail from Philadelphia to Washington DC with a stop in Baltimore. This will complete the 500 mile long high speed line connecting Boston to Washington DC and will serve 110 million people across the Northeast. So let's start at Philadelphia 30th Street Station, right where we left off last week. Oh yeah, by the way, if you have not watched last week's webio, that will definitely help in context of that. That, web, that webio I went from New York to Philadelphia. So this is from Philadelphia all the way to Washington DC. So it starts leaving. I think a slow speed of 60 kilometers per hour will work until it gets to the straight section. Then it'll go at 250 kilometers per hour on an existing track. I don't even think curve straightening is needed yet. And it just continues past this turn here. After that, it'll reach Sharon Hill, which is where the line will start going at 300 kilometers per hour. Now here there may be some curve straightening required right around the Delaware. This is not Delaware yet, never mind. There's a similar curve. But here curve straightening will be required, but it's all just using the center two tracks of the existing line and tilting trains. This is how you increase speed for not that much money. So it'll continue along the tracks and another curve straightening section as it enters Delaware. This is just a basic nothing too much in this web view nothing too special here now here is probably the first special part it'll bifurcate into two sections and they come back together the regional high speed or the high speed with more local stops will go on the existing track to wilmington and have a stop there and then come back to the main high speed line southwest however no full express track exists the entire way. So what I've decided is to start a tunnel from the main line right next to route 495. And it'll go underneath the existing northeast corridor in a new tunnel. This tunnel is one and a half miles long. And it'll exit it right after crossing route 495. And this is still at full speed by the way. 300 kilometers per hour. It'll join this existing track until a little later. This curve straightening would not even be required. Not really required, but it's too much curve straightening for it to even be a viable solution. So the only option is to actually build a new line and a new bridge, as this is a drawbridge and that cannot handle the speed and momentum of high speed trains. And it continues and comes back to the main line. The main line continues at full 300 kilometers per hour. There may be some curve straightening. And it enters Maryland, Cecil County, at full 300 speed. Now here are some extensive curve straightenings required, but given the size of these bridges and like the lack of nearby property, nearby meaning right next to the tracks, shouldn't be a problem here. Not as bad as it was in Connecticut, right? So you continue. Nothing too special here, it's just your basic upgrade the catenary, upgrade the railway ties, and straighten the tracks to allow full speed. It'll cross over the Susquehanna River at full speed. Now this bridge, I think, may have to be wide and it's only two tracks and I think more than two tracks are required. So maybe a four track bridge will work as it's three or four tracks on both sides and it will just boost the amount of capacity on the entire line as a whole, not just in this section. If you just make one short three or four track section in an otherwise two track line, you can get a lot more capacity on the entire line. 
That's what Long Island Railroad's doing on the main line. At least they're planning, and I'm planning on doing a web video on that soon too. So continue. Think. Still full speed. Some curve straightening required here. This will pass through Aberdeen. I was thinking of a station here, but it's not worth it. In fact, the only regional stop between Baltimore and Philadelphia is Wilmington. There's not enough demand anywhere else for another station. So it continues, and pretty much it's a straight shot. Now here, again, it's too sharp. You could curve straightening it, but then there's a bridge right after that. Only two tracks too, so the only option here, in my opinion, is to build a new bridge. And believe it or not, the biggest expense from this project is probably to build these new bridges. But I think they're worth it, as a train would otherwise have to slow down to 100 kilometers per hour, which would probably eat up 10 to 15 minutes of time when you include acceleration, deceleration, all that, when it doesn't need to, you just go buy a new bridge. And it may seem expensive, but if we were to build an entire new high-speed line, it would be at least five times as expensive as my proposal. So you continue. And right here, Middle River, the speed should decrease to 250 kilometers per hour as curve straightening is not that easy given the amount of development nearby. It'll cross Route 695 as it enters the Baltimore area. And it'll just follow the existing tracks. I know this line isn't there, but it'll go on the middle two tracks of the existing Northeast Main Line. And as it gets closer to Baltimore, probably right here, the speed will decrease to 100 kilometers per hour as it approaches Baltimore. Like curve straightening is nearly impossible here. So only a low speed will work as it enters Baltimore Penn Station. Now, the travel time between Philadelphia and Baltimore is only 35 minutes. 35 minutes. So basically from New York to Baltimore is 38 plus 35, which is 73 minutes. Some people can handle that as a daily commute. That's insane. And that's all with a relatively inexpensive but very functional high-speed rail system. But we're not done. There's one city left and I'm planning to go all the way to DC in this video. DC is only 40 miles away. I thought it's not worth making a separate one. It's also the end of the year and a Christmas present for you guys. I don't want to leave something unfinished. I want to give this all to you. However, there's a problem. This is the most expensive part of the project. If I were to just follow this existing tunnel, the speed at most would be 50 to 60 kilometers per hour, and it's a good 3-4 miles. In other words, you could save around 7, 8, 9, even 10 minutes if you were to build a new tunnel. So what I did, this was actually pretty tricky for me. I was wondering, should I just make the tunnel start earlier to save a little distance? But then you have all the bridges, you have Route 83, and you have the stream nearby. So the only way was to just start a tunnel right before this metro state, as right before it goes underneath this metro station. And it continues through the tunnel pretty much on a straight line. Oh yeah, by the way, after it rounds this curve, the speed becomes 250 kilometers per hour. And it reaches the main line just after passing West Baltimore Station. And then it turns around Carol's, the Carroll area and it Carroll area of Baltimore and it'll become 300 kilometers per hour again. If you're wondering why am I not doing 350? 350 requires exceptionally straight track and as you can see before between Trenton and Princeton and New Brunswick that was a complete straight line. This is relatively straight but you still have some turns so 300 is good. But you could see like it's this part especially is pretty easy to straighten up these curves. Sometimes curve straightening can be as little as just spacing out the tracks. Other times it could mean actually relocating all four tracks. But in the end, it's not as much work as building a real 
high, like a full high speed line. And this is a real high speed line. I also almost messed up there. This is a real high speed line, not a fake one. So it continues. Now here, this is a little interesting. Maybe a tunnel. Honestly, maybe a tunnel here because as you can see, this is a mountainous region. Maybe a tunnel here or a dip in speed to 250 kilometers per hour. I think a dip in speed is more valuable as we already spent a lot of money on the other bridges and tunnels, especially the tunnel right out of Baltimore. So 250 kilometers per hour for that small section. Goes at 300 again. And right when it enters New Carrollton, oh yeah, by the way, New Carrollton is the next regional high speed stop. So the regional high speed stop from Philadelphia stops at Wilmington, Baltimore, New Carrollton, and then Washington DC. I chose New Carrollton for one reason. Well, not really one reason, but it's a reason that contains many other reasons. Remember in my New York to Boston high speed rail in Western Massachusetts at the interchange of Route 90 and Route 128 right here. I proposed a new station at the crossroads of the area many people on route 198 and route 128 and route 90 can use a station easily well, new Carrollton is also in that situation but this is also an existing station it's right on the route 495 beltway just literally they even have dedicated ramps to the station what more do you want this would be a perfect regional high-speed stop, especially for the northern and eastern suburbs of Washington, D.C. The speed decreases to 250 km per hour as it enters the inner suburbs of D.C. and actually enters D.C. itself. And it joins the other line at a speed of 100 km per hour and it enters the upper level of Washington DC Union Station. So you may be wondering, what's the deal? The speed already goes at 125? Okay, speed at maximum between Philadelphia and DC is 135 miles per hour, which is 220 kilometers per hour. However, that's achieved in very few places as the tracks haven't been modified one bit to handle high speed. If the tracks are modified, for example, putting concrete railway ties, increasing catenary voltage and curve straightening, 300 km per hour can be achieved relatively easily between Philadelphia and DC. Oh yeah, by the way, the travel time between Baltimore and DC is 19 minutes, which makes sense considering most of this is 300 km per hour. 19 minutes that's not a lot at all so you do 30 38 minutes plus 35 which is 73 minutes plus 19 92 minutes so just a little bit over one and a half hours from dc to new york you could take a day trip from new york to dc and come back in the same day that was unheard of before but this high speed line makes it possible it is a culmination of three web views that I did. New York to Boston, New York to Philadelphia, and Philadelphia to Washington DC with a major stop in Baltimore. It serves 110 million people living on the East Coast and will boost the economy with the entire Eastern section of the United States and put the USA back into global competitiveness. Thank you for watching.